Now let's look at the uh, Posner task. We're going to start out here with a neutral trial where you just have the Q presented on the left-hand side of space. This, I forgot to mention, the left-hand side of space is on the left-hand side of the model, obviously, and the right-hand side of space is on the right-hand side of the model. A uh, target that's presented on the left-hand side of space, uh, there's no Q, and this gives you a kind of baseline level of processing speed. Now, when we do the next trial, this is the Q trial for the validly queued case. So we just presented the queue, and now what we're gonna see is what happens when we present the target on the validly queued same side of space. So now this is the moment um, right after the queue was presented. The network has all this residual activity left over from when the queue was presented, and then the target comes in right at that time and activity flows up into that uh, V1 layer. And critically, because attention is already focused on that side of space, these neurons are already essentially getting in some boost of activity uh, bottom up, and that's flowing into the object pathway as well. And we'll see that relatively quickly, uh, because of all this kind of spatial attentional support that was driven by the previous queue, um, the network is pretty quickly able to activate these uh, target object features, even though they do have to actually come kind of compete with the Q features. Um, they do get uh, it activated and you get a relatively quick response. Okay, so this plot shows the number of cycles of processing uh, for uh, the neutral case here and now for the valid case. And you can see that the valid case was in fact processed significantly faster uh, fewer cycles to get that target level of activation above threshold. So now the interesting case is what happens when we show the invalidly queued trial. And so here we have the queue again, but now the target is going to show up all the way over here on the other side of space. And what we see as we rewind and look at the state of activation just as that queue, as that target came in, it's essentially having to compete against all that prior activation that was supporting the other side of space. And that competition takes a while to, to work its way through. There's still an overall preference or, or bias for the bottom-up information, so you don't hallucinate and, and ignore that new information, but it just takes longer for that to penetrate into this network that was kind of essentially prepared to see, and see everything on the other side of space and that results in a net slowing for the invalidly queued case. Now, the next step is to try to see how this network is affected when we uh, damage it in the same way that we think is happening with people who have suffered these strokes and, and now have neglect. So to do that, we lesion the network. We specify that we're gonna lesion both of the spatial pathways, and we're gonna lesion half of the locations and half the neurons. And what that means is that now half of these neurons on the right-hand side of the network are no longer uh, going to get activity. Uh, they've, their weights have been zeroed out. And so when we run the, the Posner task, because the damage is on the right-hand side of this network, um, you can see that it has no effect on processing of cues and, and targets that show up on the left-hand side of space. These are unaffected. Um, but what happens is when we queue the network on the left side of space, and now when we present the target on the right hand, the damaged right hand side of the network, it has a much harder time out competing because you only have half the number of spatial pathway neurons. So you can kind of see that these neurons in the back here that are kind of this 50% lesion, uh, the damage has, has sort of essentially knocked out half of the neurons in each location as we specified, and therefore it has a much harder time uh, competing against that uh, existing activity from the intact side of space. So now we're going to rewind and look at that activity as it comes in again, and you can we'll kind of look at it from this angle here. The target's going to show up, and now this processing trying to activate this other side of space is having to fight much more strongly against uh, this residual activity 
from the intact side of space, this damaged side of the network. Again, you can picture these classic kind of tug of war dynamics that we've talked about at the level of the individual neuron. It's that same kind of tug of war now playing out between neurons, between these two sides of space. And this is just a weaker tugger. It's a weaker puller. It has fewer overall uh, neurons able to kind of compete against this the intact side of space and therefore it just takes longer for that to really build up. You can see it really kind of struggling there and then ultimately it does get activated. And so when we look at our plot we can see that the overall reaction time for these invalidly queued trials in the, the case of the damage network are significantly slower. It's exhibiting the same kind of disengaged deficit but not because of damage to the disengager, but rather because the network has experienced this brain damage on that side, and it's a really a, a, kind of, a kind of competitive story that explains the overall effects. Finally, we can now do this case where we have uh, something called Bay-Lynch syndrome, where both sides of space have experienced damage. And in that case, you get this rather surprising result from the perspective of the Posner model, where in fact you get a reduction in overall attentional effects. And if you think back to what's happening in the network, um, this is actually because the spatial pathway is now just having a reduced overall effect. It benefits you less when it's, when it's a valid queue, but it also hurts you less when it's an invalid queue. So this is really the opposite of what you would expect the Posner boxology model, which doesn't really account for this uh, effects of bilateral damage. However, uh, patients who have this kind of bilateral damage, which is called Bay-Lynch syndrome, actually have an overall impairment in visual performance because now they are really overwhelmed when they see uh, the, the kind of normal visual world with lots of different visual features present. Um, they have difficulty focusing in. They have often a great difficulty in reading, which is a, an example where you really need that spatial attention to kind of focus in on each individual word. Um, and so you really see profound uh, effects of the spatial damage, but you don't see increased reaction time on this Posner task. And this model can also show you uh, object-based attentional effects as a result of top-down activity from the object pathway coming down and influencing uh, lower levels. So uh, it's not just spatial pathways that can give rise to attention. And in general, there's this kind of you know mystery, what is attention really? And ultimately, we think in, in these kinds of models show us that attention is just neural activity plus the effects of inhibitory competition. So there isn't anything here that we think is like, you know, a specific thing in the network that we would call attention. It's just the activity and the competition and how those emerge and play out in the context of these different pathways. So the fact that we have a spatial processing pathway separate from an object recognition pathway gives rise to these kinds of spatial attention effects because activity in that pathway has these kinds of effects. So again, a very classic example of an emergent phenomenon in the network, uh, not a kind of actual separate mechanism of attention. So to summarize the kind of boxology type model uh, from the classic cognitive psychology era gives you a sense that, you know, there are these very specific discrete modules in the brain that are doing these different uh, kind of uh, aspects of attention. Whereas here in this alternative model that we think is more accurate, attention just emerges out of the interactions between these different pathways and attention is just activity and inhibition and uh, as they interact with the kind of structure of the overall visual system.